Hello and welcome to Sue Finley Designs. As always, thank you for your support. It's much, very much appreciated. Now, today's video is um, how I created this piece behind me. I was challenged to create something using red because red is not normally a colour I use. So I thought, oh, okay, let, let's um, have a go at that. So what I did initially was um, I got some really nice red pigment. It's a Colour Obsession uh, Fire Engine Red. And I wasn't sure whether I was going to do just black, white and red or add a touch of gold, leave the white in, remove the white. So what I did was I had a little play around on a small piece of masonite board um, just to test out the colours. So on this piece I used red, black, gold and white. And just let me go in there with that. So this was just like an experiment to see um, how the colours work together and whether I like them or not. Um, I didn't really like the design I, I came up with so I threw some stones on as usual to um, make it a little bit more interesting if that was possible. So, so this is why this test piece has actually got um, some stones in. So normally if I do a test piece I wouldn't normally stick stones in but I wanted to see one how the stones would look when the background was painted black and the colours put on top how the stones would react when it sank through the colours so this is why this chest piece was done so it actually turned out not too bad in the end so you can just see the gold and things in there going on anyway this is what i had done the test piece on before creating this piece now what i did with this one is i left it after pouring the colours i left it for an hour before manipulating the colours because if you do it too soon you get the colours blending together and I didn't want that I wanted when I use my fingers through it to still see definition of colour because um, I didn't want them to mix and muddy too easily perhaps they shouldn't have been left for a whole hour I could have got away with doing it for just half an hour but as you can see I still got the desired effect that I was after. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to zoom the picture in, uh, the camera in, sorry, so that you can see a little bit more detail of what's going on here before we move into the video. Now you have to excuse my reflection in this um, video. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to avoid when you've got a black piece, but nevertheless, try and ignore that and look at what's going on. So as you can see here. Um, when I've dragged it through, it's kept the shape of my fingers pulling the piece through. So you get quite a nice effect doing it that way. So you can see, can I get down here? So you can see how we've got um, a definition between the black layer and the red and gold layer. And obviously, you've got the stones in there. And again, you can see you've got, you've got a nice little bit of detail going on in places. Now, I did actually um, start off mixing um, or adding a little bit of mineral spirits to maybe see if some cells would happen. But because I ended up doing it this way, it, I, sh I didn't really need to do that. That was fine. Let me try and move out of the way so you can see some of the, the shape. And what you have here, because it's left for an hour as well, you don't actually get a completely smooth effect either. You get like a sort of almost like a ripple in the resin and that creates a nice effect as well when the light hits it. So anyway, this gives you an idea on what you can do if you leave the resin to cure for an hour. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into how we create this piece. Okay, so I've painted a, a wooden cradle board black before um, starting this one and the colours I'm using is black truffle gold and fire engine red in the colour obsession range the gold is a powder and the black and red is a paste so i decided not to use white in this case what i also did was i bought a whisk a um, very expensive whisk from kmart it's just a plastic whisk because when i'm pouring larger amounts of resin um 
I wanted to make sure that it was fully uh, mixed up so although you've not seen me whisking that very long I did actually whisk it for a good three minutes before um, bringing it in front of the camera so I'm just pouring the, a clear layer to start off with so because I painted the background white it didn't need to have a full-on black layer I could have done it it's you can still do that you can still pour black first and then pour the colors on top but um, for this I just poured a clear layer on the black because I felt that that was sufficient you will see that the, the the colour of the black changes because obviously the, the wetness of the resin touching that but that's fine that evens itself out um, so don't worry too much about that so as always spreading it around with my fingers because you get a more even coverage doing that because you can feel where like, um, areas are higher got more resin than others and I'm going to take it right out to the edge making sure that I've not missed any bits and I'm not scraping the colour underneath by using a scraper and once again I use my heat gun to just zap any bubbles um, and we'll do that as always throughout the whole process so between layers and various things like that we will um, give the bubbles a quick zap now this is where I decided to use mineral turpentine to spritz the colours to try and create some cells. I just poured some into this little spray bottle here and I'm just going to mist the piece with a bit of that and you can see just at the bottom there how I've got little divots. And the reason why I sprayed it underneath because it rises up to the surface the idea was to create cells but because after I'd started pouring I then decided that I was going to use my fingers to drag it anyway I needn't have bothered doing that but I've also added a couple of squirts to each colour also and just give it a quick mix not too much and um, just applying the colour like I say I needn't have bothered doing that I may try and do another um, tutorial actually using it to try and create cells and see what we, we get we come up with but for this um, it was a wasted exercise really so all I'm doing here now is just following the basic shape now I knew that I wanted to create like a wave effect and drag the colors into the negative space so I've applied a little bit more gold to the top edge there and more red down to the bottom because I wanted a bit of contrast like that as well um, and again just giving it a quick zap with the heat gun to get rid of any bubbles now this is going to be left for an hour um, as I mentioned before I could have got away with just doing half an hour and I may well have a go at doing half an hour one but what I didn't want to do was the, see the colours running into each other after I'd moved it and I have done that before I have moved the colours using my fingers and, and allowed it to run into each other and you do get an interesting effect doing it that way but for this piece I wanted the definition as I mentioned earlier okay so it's been an hour and this is where the fun part starts where you actually start manipulating the resin I'm just following the flow of the wave and then just dragging it down to give it um, you know a nice curl going on there and I'll do the, the same on the other side to just create that shape and just pull the resin out into the negative space not wanting to do too much I'm not wanting to overwork it so I'm looking to see where it needs a little bit more uh, colour definition and I'll just go around and just um, pull that round allowing the colours to blend ever so slightly but as you can see because the resin has been curing for an hour it doesn't muddy too much which is pretty good so that that works for me so um, now I'm gonna go around the edge and just tidy that up make sure all of the sides are covered um, and because it's been curing for an hour the resin is quite thick so it does stick quite well to the side so I just make sure that that's all done and then before we move on to the next step
And if you've watched any of my other previous videos, you'll know that I really love these decoration fillers. In some shops, they're called diamond gems. They're very, very sparkly and they're um, several different sizes and they're quite effective when poured into resin. Because they are diamond shaped, but depending on how they fall, you can bounce light from all corners of the room really. So what I'm doing here is I'm just following the shape that I've pulled and I'm just picking out two areas to cover in stones. I tend not to overdo the stones. It's I think um, less is more really. I used um, I think uh, two and a half bags of stones on this um, and just like I say followed the shape. Standing back on occasions just to see where else needs if it needs any more and you know and just seeing if I need to add any more to other areas and things but from this piece I was quite happy with two two areas. What I do now is after I pulled that one up that shouldn't have been there just using a stick I'm just adding a little bit more definition um to the, the edges that are pulled out just to make sure that there's plenty of interest going on there. So just using a stick it doesn't move it too much and you can just get some nice design elements happening there. And once again, using the heat gun, we go around and zap the button balls. But what I'm also doing here is that um, the, the heat gun actually moves the stones. So any that are um, not sitting in resin, it'll blow to one side slightly. So they'll find a bit of resin and settle down. But I also use my finger to push any that I can see that are sitting proud down into the resin. And then uh, when it's cured... I'll probably have to pick a few off that didn't actually hit any of the resin and um, are not stuck. I think there was about four pieces that didn't actually stick. And here you go. This is the next day. The, the stones and see how the the stone with them being clear, they take on the colour of the resin below. But also when they sink through to the bottom, they'll also take on some of the black. So you can get some really interesting effects with the stones as well, as well as getting some nice. Um, highlights and bouncing of light coming off them. Well that's it for another uh, week. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed creating it. As always I hope it gives you inspiration for your new pieces and if you have any comments please feel free to leave them uh, below. If you haven't already and would like to, why not uh, join the Facebook group? Um, links are in the description below, as are links to the Instagram and website. And that's it for, t for this time. So until next time, happy crafting. See you soon. And goodbye.